I am working through the electrostatics section of the 2019 physics exam. Electrostatics has a multiple choice question, which is question 1.7, which reads as follows. Two identical spheres, R and S, on insulated stands carrying charges of positive and negative Q respectively, are placed a distance apart. Sphere R exists an electrostatic force of magnitude F on sphere S. The two spheres are now brought into contact and returned to their original positions. The magnitude of the electrostatic force that sphere R exerts on sphere S is now. And what we need to see here is that once they are brought into contact, they share charge with each other. And we use our charge sharing formula, which says that the new charge on either or both of the objects is the sum of the two charges. And in this case, the sum of the two charges divided by two, because there are two of them that are sharing the charge. And that tells us that the new charge on each of these two spheres is zero coulombs. Now, obviously, if there is no charge on either sphere, that means that the electrostatic force that exists between them will be zero. So the correct answer to question 1.7 was A, zero. The electrostatics question is always question 7 in the physics exam. And question 7 reads as follows. A small sphere Y carrying an unknown charge is suspended at the end of a light inextensible string which is attached to a fixed point. Another sphere X carrying a charge of positive 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs on an insulated stand is brought close to sphere Y. A note here, inextensible, just tells us that the string cannot stretch, so we do not expect anything strange to happen um, with the string or the distance to change in any way. And it being an insulated stand just means that that charge cannot escape. Sphere Y experiences an electrostatic force and comes to rest 0.2 meters away from sphere X with the string at an angle of 10 degrees to the vertical as shown in the diagram below. 7.1.1 What is the nature of the charge on sphere Y choose positive or negative? When they ask for the nature it is always either positive or negative and we can see here that the only way that sphere Y would come to rest a distance away from sphere X because there is a gravitational force acting on it is if sphere Y has the same charge or the same nature of charge as sphere X which tells us that sphere Y must be positively charged. Question 7.1.2 Calculate the magnitude of the charge on sphere Y if the magnitude of the electrostatic force acting on it is 3.05 newtons. The simplest way, but certainly not the only way to do this, was to use Coulomb's law, which tells us that the electrostatic force that exists between two objects is equal to K times the charge on both objects over the distance of separation between them squared. Again, an important note here to write this formula down exactly as it is given in the formula sheet. The next step then is to substitute the values as they have been given. And so we have been told that the force is 3.05 newtons. We know that K is 9 times 10 to the 9 because that is given in our formula sheet. The charge on X has been given as 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs and the charge on Y is our unknown, where the distance of separation is always the distance between their centers measured in meters, given here as 0.2 meters, and that must be squared. We can then solve or rearrange this to find that the charge on Y must then be 2.26 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and we have said that that is a positive charge, and this is rounded to two decimal places. These are the only three steps that are required in order to get the three marks. One mark for the formula, one mark for substitution into the formula as it is given, and one mark for the final answer. You could have also calculated the electric field and then used the electric field to find with the force to find the charge, but this is certainly the simplest way to have approached this question. Question 7.1.3, draw labeled free body diagram acting on sphere Y. So sphere Y, we can see, has a tension force that is acting upward at an angle. Sphere Y also, because it is 
an object that has mass and it is on Earth would have a force of gravity that is acting downward on it. And as we have just shown, because these two have like charges, sphere Y will be experiencing a repulsive force or a force to the left, a force away from sphere X. And we would label that either Fe or we could label it as Fxy, the force that X exerts on Y. Important here, we have been asked to draw a labeled free body diagram, which means that we must include a key that describes all of these forces. That being T as the tension force, Fg as the gravitational force, and Fxy, the electrostatic force that X exerts on Y. This key is very important to receiving the full mark allocation for this question. Question 7.1.4 asks, calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. And what this requires is that we make use of Newton's first law. Newton's first law can be used here because we know that this object comes to rest at this point, point 0.2 meters away, which means that there is a tension force acting in that direction. There is a force of gravity acting downward and there is a, an applied force or an electrostatic force acting to the left. And since we know that this object is at rest, we know that the net force acting on this object must be zero. That is by Newton's first law. Since we know that this net force is zero, what that tells us is that this tension force, which must have an X and a Y component, the X component of this tension force must be equal to the electrostatic force because those are the only two forces acting on this object horizontally. And so what we can say here is that our electrostatic force, if XY, the force that X exerts on Y, must be equal to the X component of the tension force, or we can then rewrite that using our trigonometry where this angle here of 10 degrees has been given to us. And so we can see that if this is the angle, so I'm going to redraw that triangle, this is our tension force, this is the Y component, TY, and this is the X component, TX. If this is our angle theta here, then this, the X component, is the opposite side, which means that we would use sine in order to determine what that X component is. And so we can say that if XY, our calculated or our given force of 3.05 newtons must be equal to the tension that is unknown multiplied by sine of the given angle that is 10 degrees. And that then allows us to find that the tension in this string is 17.56 newtons. Question 7.2 reads as follows. Two small charged spheres A and B on insulated stands with charges of plus 2 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs and negative 4 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs respectively are placed 0.4 meters apart as shown in the diagram below. M is the midpoint between spheres A and B. Question 7.2.1. Define the term electric field at a point. Important to note the difference here between the definition for electric field only and electric field at a point. The definition for electric field at a point is given in the guideline document as the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. Important also to note that the, either one of these definitions can be asked, either electric field or electric field at a point. Those are two separate definitions. Question 7.2.2. Calculate the net electric field at point M. Now what we need to start here by realizing is that the electric field at point M is going to be the sum of the electric field as a result of charge A and the electric field as a result of charge B. And so we can, just to give ourselves an idea, we can draw a diagram that shows that 
a positive charge placed at point M would experience a force to the right as a result of charge A, that being charge A is positive, it would therefore repel a positive charge at point M to the right. This comes from the definition for electric field at a point as the force experienced per unit positive charge. Then what we would do is we would look at what electric field a point or a point charge placed at M would experience as a result of B and a positive charge would also be attracted towards B so we find that the electric field as a result of B is going to be towards the right as well. So what we can see here is that our net electric field is going to be the sum of those two electric fields, the electric field as a result of A plus the electric field as a result of B. Now at this point you have a choice, you can either continue and substitute the formulae and results into this equation or you can calculate the electric field as a result of A separately from the electric field as a result of B and then add them together. I prefer to do them separately but again there you will not be penalized either way. So we say the electric field as a result of A at point M is equal to K times the charge of A over the distance between those two points squared. K again our constant given in the exam 9 times 10 to the 9 charge on A given as 2 times 10 to the negative 5 and the distance between the two given as M is the midpoint between these two which means that the midpoint being 0 0.2 meters and that must always be squared which tells us then that the electric field as a result of A is 4.5 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb and as we've said already that is to the right. We can then perform the same calculation for the electric field as a result of B at point M and that is KQB over R squared, K being 9 times 10 to the 9, QB given as negative 4 or 4 times 10 to the negative 5 and that over the distance between them squared again halfway 0 0.2 squared which tells us that the electric field as a result of B is 9 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb again to the right and then we can calculate our net electric field again by showing that that is equal to the charge the electric field as a result of A plus the electric field as a result of B because they are both acting to the right and that allows us then to say 4.5 times 10 to the 6 plus 9 times 10 to the 6 and that gives us our final answer of 1.35 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb and important here that they've asked for the net electric field which we know is a vector quantity and so it must have direction the most correct way to say this would be either away from A or towards B but we would normally also accept to the right you will note here that Throughout this entire section, I do not include the nature of the charge, the positive or negative, in my calculations. That is because I prefer to use the logical method where we first calculate the magnitude of the charge using the formula and then determine the direction based on our definitions. You will see that I did that in this question over here and I also did it in the previous calculation where we used our electrostatic force. Um, I prefer to do it that way. Again, you will not be penalized if you choose to substitute in a negative there and then use that to determine your direction. Either way, as long as you arrive at the same answer, you will not be penalized for that. Important to remember in this section that electric field has the symbol E and has units newtons per coulomb, where force has the symbol F and is measured in newtons. These are common places where people lose silly marks for getting the units wrong even though their calculation and answer is correct.